bless your efforts with more results. Amen. 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 So if your your little efforts brought in um, this much, more of that little effort will bring in much more. Do you get what I'm saying? So, and then we are speaking in the light of fruitfulness, multiplication, and replenishment. And my intention tonight is to point us to the sequence of how things should be. How things should be. And I just want to point out that there is a way things ought to be. There is a way things should be. In this world where clarity is being eroded and you no know, sequence is being um, misunderstood as liberty and people are saying I know who creed and all of that, we need to just remind ourselves about what should be. There's a standard that should be. And maybe I should say, if you want to get a particular kind of result, there's a particular way you should line up your life. And so that's why I want to say to us that if we can address this tonight as my introduction to this series, I will continue throughout this month. Um, I want us to please just pay attention and let us see how God will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Can I hear it better? Amen. 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 We are now distracting this. Sorry, sir. So, I I want to um, observe, first of all, natural examples. The Bible tells us about certain things. You know, for example, if, if you are going to see the rain, the cloud should be dark first. Yes, Am I correct? But yes. the cloud should gather. And there will be some punches. Cloud will be seen. <laughs> Yes. But in the way life is really, it should be process, there should be a sequence. For example, God wanted to make the world. The first thing he did was let there be lights. Why didn't he just make the farmings? Why didn't he just make the rivers and fish just grow? I'm trying to say to you that the same way the Bible tells us about faith, it tells us that we should learn from God how God applies his own faith. So, for example, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, we know that by faith, God, we understand by faith, God created this world that we see. Do you remember that scripture in Hebrews 11 verse 3? He says that, for by faith we understand that this world that we see was framed by the word of God that we did not see. So that the things that do appear were made from the things that do not appear. That's Hebrews 11 verse 3. What was it? If you have a just read for us so that we get content. So, through faith. Yes, he says through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Yes, we understand that the world that we see was framed by the words of God. Uh -huh. So that things which are seen, so that the things that do appear or seen, they are not made of things which do appear. We are not made of the things that do appear. So there is something God is telling us there that there is a way things should be made. That if you want to make anything, make them from the things that are not seen. Mm. Make them from the elements of the invisible. Anybody who's going to transact in that conversation must believe in the invisible. If all you see is what you believe, then you are not yet in the likeness of prayer. Yes, you must start to know that there's an invisible world that can make a visible world. Yes, for example, one good example for me of that is um, the, the, the architecture, the world of building. You know, you find out that, I mean, Mama and I were driving yesterday. And um, we're on our way, and she, would, she kept saying, Wow, this has come up here. Wow, wow. And I was like, Yes, it has. And my thinking was that while we were looking at empty land, because there was a property I wanted to buy that time that, that we were looking at, that eventually we will not take the property of this. Then she was like, Oh, this is the property we wanted to buy. That's ah. So we're like, Which one is it? And what I want to bring out is that somebody looked at that property and saw the bedroom flats. So it's skyscraper, skyscraper they call it now. You know, what you are seeing as co -co chaos, somebody is seeing as destiny, as opportunity. Yes, and you need to start to see differently. You need to start to look at things that what was like problem. There is actually opportunity in it. Mm. What people contain, that's, this is useless. You can look through it and see what God wants to do with it. Somebody was talking about the um, um, Disney World that when the person who owned the property looked at their money.
wanted to say. He said, look at this nonsense. So Paul this thing, as I heard, well, no, I was not there, but as I heard, he called his friend and said, come and see the place. He said, what do you want to do with this wilderness? This place is just big, this place is black and nothing can come out. But Walt Disney said, I see a fantasy center. Yes, sir. And people like fantasy center today, there's not yet a place like it. In fact, it is a benchmark for everywhere else. What am I trying to do to us? I want us to see that there is a lot of power, but in the building in itself, the first thing that happens is not to carry trailer and start to enter. So you must first of all even check the ground. You will just check. Some people even start with soil tests. Yes. I know that what is the soil texture of this place in South Africa? You are not allowed to build without first of all testing the soil integrity of that place. Then you go from soil integrity. There are stages to what works now. I'm using that to explain that this 2024, there are some things that you should not put before the horse. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You should put some things, first things first. Put the right things in the first place so that you will not be gathering everything. Now, let me even say this. Christianity, as it is, has certain things that should come line upon line, line upon line, before you now start to get to some certain discussions. For example, this teaching especially is to help somebody know the sequence of how you should get to the point where you understand the meaning of something like first fruits. So if you just chop first fruits, you will do it because there's something not in place already. I don't see the result and you will lose the beauty of everything. Yes, sir. You guess what I'm yes, saying? Yes, so I'm trying to lay first things first, first foundations. And this is important. It's not just because um, you just know knowledge. Today, you just know faith. Tomorrow, you know healing. Tomorrow, you know power. Tomorrow, you know. If you learn it like that, you'll be confused very soon. Mm -hmm. Your knowledge should be sequential. If you ever went through school, they graduated you gradually from one course to another. Mm -hmm. Most good schools have been laid out so that you can connect the value of one course to the other. Yes, yes. 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 You know? yes. Uh, uh, uh. yes. So I went for a program in Jobs earlier on this last year, was last year. And, and when I got there, it was a strategic uh, program, policy, strategy, and leadership program. Then they took us policy. I said, why did they take the policy? Somebody was said, why not take us leadership first before taking us policy and not just strategy? So the, the, the faculty instructor now came and said, no, it can't work like that. You must understand policy first, then understand strategy, then now come to leadership. That's what I want to say to you. There are certain things that, as a Christian, you should first of all understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have your, your foundations right. So that when we layer on anything on that, it will grow, because you won't be confused for what you do. Eating hamburger. You don't just put the beef in the ham and anywhere. Am I correct, sir? Yeah. Yeah. You must layer, first of all, the dough. Then you put maybe some vegetables, it depends on whatever, or put some spray on the bread, or what, you know, I, I, I don't do it, I'm just saying, because I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. I'm just trying to say that you don't just jump. Things that make meaning have sequence. Yes, oh, yeah. Things that will make meaning have sequence. So don't just jump. For example, there's a sequence to getting married. Don't just bring Belen. You bring, first of all, the man to introduction. Then, you know, we take it from there, you know, even as a church, right? Gabriel is getting his name, baby name tomorrow. There's a sequence. Okay, now, the other day I was telling you about the sequence of how things are done in ventures about getting married. You don't just come and say, this is my baby. Let us know her first. Let us even know that it's official that, okay, she's truly free. Some brothers have come to ministries, not this one, but it's <laughs> ministries, that they were married before they came. Oh, yes. Met a sister in the house. Talking to her, only to get to the future, and we had to reverse everything to the back again. The guy was willing to continue that, that way till the end. So you don't just say, ah, it's just I just like her, just goes down. No, don't cause confusion in the house of God. That's why I had to say the way you go about to this house, you tell someone to tell your pastor. You mention it to the man of God. It's not because we're trying to be uh, micromanaging. What is your relationship like? Thank God I have wife too. You understand? Everybody has five guys. Yes, now. So you know that I tried to, you know, you understand what I say? Yes. yes sir. Sir. I was telling my mother that if she was a member of this church and I was not married, I would tell her to be behind that message. Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. 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 There's a way you check it, you do this, you do that, you leave on, you shake it, you leave on, you know, and all that. I'm just trying to say that everything 
thing that really counts, nature is already teaching us. Nature is already teaching us. Don't, don't, don't say it doesn't matter. It matters. It matters. Even your waking up, brushing your teeth, take your bath, go to work, all those things matter. Having set that foundation, I want to speak to you about what I realize is the foundation of fruitfulness. So, as I said, it might not be the exact title when I said uh, maybe the foundation for fruitfulness is uh, the foundation of fruitfulness. You know, very important. The foundation of fruitfulness is really the heart of what I'm to talk about. If you check in God's word, let's go there. Let's go there. In John chapter 16. John chapter 15. Should we use 15 or 16? Let's use 16. Or let's use 15. Is it that this thing doesn't work all the time? Where did you hear this? If I just used to decide when it's the TV needs to be upgraded. That's oh, updated. Up, yes, it needs an upgrade. Okay, so it why has not been connected to internet. That's what. Okay. Then. Yes, sir. Let's read it from verse 1. If you don't mind, please, let's hurry up our time. Let's go. One to go. Everybody, one to go. I, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband now. Every branch in me that beareth no fruit, he taketh it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth much fruit. Now, we are the clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can he except he abide in me. Go to verse 8, please. You are the branch. He that abide in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into fire, and they are gone. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Here is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be disciples. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, it shall be given. All right. So you see here that God in verse three, Jesus Christ was talking. I'll share this with you. You did church the other day. He was saying there in verse three that now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. In the concept of fruitfulness that we preach as a church, and this is very important, the synonym of the word fruitfulness is productivity. Yes, and to be productive mm -hmm. is not necessarily just because you are a Christian, but there is a Christian way of productivity. The Bible speaks about such a man called the diligent man. A man can be diligent and get results. This does not mean he's a Christian. He's just diligent. God honors the diligent hand. The Bible says that in all labor, there's profit. So a man can work hard and get results like as though God will be him. God will not forsake the work of your diligence just because you are not called by his name. That's why he doesn't look at Christians or non-Christians to judge whom he rewards the duty of their labor. If it's about the farmer who has to sow in the farm, he doesn't necessarily say, You are not a Christian, I'll not let rain fall on your son. No. He allows the rain pour on everybody. When it comes to the sunshine, he allows the sun. He doesn't select those that the sun should shine upon. Because though they are not his children, they 
there are still his creation. Uh, I know that some of us struggle with understanding that concept that God is the father of some, but the God of all. He's God of all. He's God of all. Argue with yourself. God is the God of all. Yes, sir. Uh, to make him say the God of just a select few is to render him irrelevant. Mm, yes, God sir. is the God of all. Okay, if you were not the God of all, how would they pray to him so that they can be saved by him? He still has to be their God. Mm. It does, it's not just because you are born again, you say, I don't have the monopoly or the exclusive right of God. It's not true. God is still the God to the idol worshiper. That's why the idol worshiper can call and say, Lord, grant me, O God, my Lord's salvation. I don't know if you know that. Yes, yes, God is the God of all. God is the God of all. You may argue with that. God is the Father of all spirits. The God of all spirits. He is God of all flesh. Yes, sir. O God of all flesh, to you shall all flesh. Uh, what, o God of all. Um, o, um, how did he say that? Uh, o God that answers prayer. Sorry. O God that answers prayers. To you shall all flesh come. So God is the God of all. Now, why am I saying that? Because I want you to know that God will grant everybody reward. Whether you are born again, not born again, if you go to work, you will get the results. Mm-hmm. If a man sleeps with his wife, and by the grace of God, everything goes well, God will still grant the child. He will say, ah, you are not born again. You will be married. No. <laughs> Please, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So someone is working, he's coming up with a concept. The people that have invented some things, not all of them are Christians. Some of them are, but not all of them are Christians. Very useful things for that matter. Mm-hmm. Some of them are even atheists. Are you going to say yes? So you wonder, he had the God, how? Oh God, God leaves development to the man that can catch it. Mm-hmm. He's not going to leave it for only Christians. In fact, I dare you say that Christians can handle God's plan for development. I am. Yes. The religious man won't allow us to break through the box. Mm-hmm. Wow, how can you see? This is how witchcraft starts. This is how I can stay here and be talking to someone here without any light. <laughs> They see the TV with all due respect, and some of it we don't. They say, they say this thing is the devil's yeah. cause. Whereas God is trying to advance us. Can't you even see the sky is a screen? Do you want ah. to see that God knows what's going on? Does it not occur to you that God is bigger than all these things we are seeing? The average Christian is limited to what he has taught him. He doesn't want heresy, so he doesn't want justice in the street jacket. But don't believe it's like, let's go there. I beg you. Let's go there. And you'll find that, that they come out with inventions. Yes, sir. Some of them ready to lose their life just to find out one small yes. development. Yes. What am I trying to say? There is a God way of succeeding. Yes, sir. There's a God way of succeeding. There's a human way of succeeding. And God wants us to go his way. Now, the way of the Lord, according to the scripture, tells us very clearly. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. That means God is the dresser. Of the life. He says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. I want to please note the response that God is saying that you are a branch in him. I would think to myself that the branch should naturally flee from the tree. Yes. Hello. Yes. Is it the duty of the branch to worry about the fruitful? Mm-hmm. Is it not what you give me I will produce? Yes. No. In the kingdom, it's not quite so. Every branch must be responsible for the fruit he produces. Ah, yeah. So he's saying that, look, though you are connected to me, but if you are not fruitful, the Father is coming for you. Mm. Uh-huh. I want to show you here that God doesn't joke with this concept of fruitfulness, or being productive, or being, you know, you know, bringing out stuff. And that's what I want us to check in our lives. That are you working to the degree of your potential? Your being connected to the branch does not be automatic. You know, some people that I'm in Christ, I will be fruitful. No. He said, every branch that is connected to me, that does not bear forth fruit, the father will cut away. So it is possible that branch A is bearing fruit, but branch B is not. Why would branch A bear fruit from the same tree and branch B not? Hmm. It's Bible, and I want us to please understand that God's methods are very simple. His methods remain, I keep telling you that if it starts to get complex, there's a problem. Yes, sir. God's word must stay simple to your spirit. <clears throat> I get what I'm saying here. Yes, sir. That's why I pray for simplicity of expression because although God is trying to say something, if we complicate it, people will be lost. What we're saying is very simple. It's very simple. And that's why I want to ask you a question. What will make branch A be fruitful and branch B not? Why? What can make a branch A be fruitful and branch B not? And branch C is fruitful and another branch D not fruitful. What can be responsible? Then you see the first thing Jesus Christ said in verse 3. 
He said, he says, uh, okay, so let me finish that reading. He says, and every branch that beareth fruit, watch it, and that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3 now says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You wonder why did cleanness come into this place? Because the first principle for fruitfulness is cleanness. It's cleanness. And I call it in my message here, sanctification. I call it sanctification, I call it purification. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. We don't have the privilege of having those scriptures tonight, but it's okay. See what it says. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God. So if we, like we said about the, the stuff of, you know, um, building, there are foundations. You don't build just because you feel like you start with foundation. Am I making this upset? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know, foundation first of all goes down before it goes up. Mm. And to the degree of how high you want it to rise is how low you should make it go. Mm. I want you to see here that this is the point at which Christianity starts to take a choice that you can be a branch in the vine and not be fruitful. Mm. This is where the demarcation starts. This is why you see some Christians build like a skyscraper while some others build like a bungalow. Mm. This is where the demarcation really starts. The quality of sanctification, the quality of purification. That's why the scripture explains something to us. Can we read it together, please? Yes, Let's look at what it says. It says there in verse 19. Never yes. Yes. The, the foundation of God's standards short. I Lord, Lord, let everyone that named the name of Christ depart from the beginning. Verse 20. Want to go? But in a great house. Like on a great tree. Okay? In a great house, like on a great tree. Shall we together? Yes, yes sir. sir. In a great house, like on a great tree. What does you know? There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Did you see that? Yes, so we are saying like in a great house, there are different vessels. Some of them are unto honor, some of them are not unto honor. Yes, a man of God used an illustration one time. Please don't get tired of me this afternoon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A man of God used an illustration one time like that and said there are some bowls that we use to serve kings in our houses. And there are some that we use in the bedroom. Mm. Whatever you do with the bowl in the bedroom, it's not likely to be something you want to put on the table in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. So you, you, you check it out. Why would this bowl be qualified in the bathroom? And why would this one be qualified on the dining? Why? Something makes it so. The quality of material is yes, sir. the easy accessibility to it. Mm. Those things define value. Now, at some point, that bowl in the bedroom can be as valuable. And the one in the table is still as valuable. But tell you to throw one out is the one in the bedroom. Yes. Yes. What am I trying to say? That you are in Christ is not the end. Mm -hmm. You need to define what kind of Christ you want to be in. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The quality of your sanctification. These things matter. Don't let anybody deceive you, sir. Mm. Purification of the spirit is very important. Yes, when a man's heart is pure, the purer he is, the more powerful he can be. Mm. Mm. There's no point in deceiving you, sir. Without purity, there's no power. Aye, yeah. so there's no power. We corrupt the purity of our lives when we don't. I mean, when we corrupt the power of our lives when we don't go through purity. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's why they run gold through fire. Mm. If gold must come pure, it must go through fire. The purer your gold, the better the furnace. Mm. If gold is your target, the furnace is your target. You must understand that there is a place in you. That's why I said, among everything, if you are not taught the spirit of sanctification, you are going to place faith on anything. And you will say, I know faith. I know that you are not layering it well. Mm. That's why I said, first things first, yes. the purity of your spirit. The understanding of what Christ has done to your spirit. It's not just an ordinary thing. 
especially now that we have charismatic funkadelics and Pentecostal rascals, we need to admit the need and the duty to understand the place of spiritual foundation. It comes with a purification. Jesus said to them, you are clean because of the words. Why? What causes cleanness? Let us ask the say, you are clean. He said, by the words I've spoken to you. Hmm. In other words, it starts with cleanness. It starts with purification. Sure. It starts with sanctification. It starts yeah. with holiness. In that sense, understand that framework of conversation is very important. Yes, sir. Quick, let me dissociate them from one another. Holiness is not something you grow in. You become holy by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. One second. Mm. You don't do holiness, you are holy. That's why I don't say do holiness, say be holy. Mm. What does that mean? Let the continuous consciousness of the Holy Spirit dwell in you. That you are carrying a Holy Spirit. Notice that that name is very interesting. Globally, it's called Holy Spirit. Mm. If you want to spiritualize it, someone say Holy Ghost. He didn't give himself a name. The character is the adjective. Ah. Holy. Holy. So we must carry. That's this way the, the foundation for stable Christianity starts. That wherever you go, you can never be lost. Mm. It starts with this purification, this understanding that I carry the Holy Spirit. Not just this casual thing. And you know that, like I said, in this era of yo man, what up, what up, okay? Don't play with the Holy Ghost, sir. Mm-hmm. Jesus talking, he said, Look, you can't help me or you can abuse me, but don't mess up the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. He doesn't do it. Yes, sir. Last <laughs> last he writes for him that he marked you. One time. Once when I say Jesus is love, it's not love. You can yank me, you have to. I'm sure you get what I'm Yes, sir. So what I'm saying first is that it starts with sanctification. It starts with purification. It starts with you knowing that the Lord has saved you. That there are some things that should be shed away. Yes, sir. Some things should be let go. Mm. The affinity of the flesh should start to die. Mm. The cravings of the flesh should start to dematerialize. Yes, sir. You should start to let go the things that you used to do before. Mm. The purging of the spirit. He says, if any man purge himself, let's read it now. Verse 21. Huh? I think we stopped at 21. We read 20 and we're at 21 now. Let's just read it so that I can say everything I want to send out and then go forward. Let's read it together in verse 21. Not to go. If, if a man therefore put himself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. Sanctified. Sanctified is set apart. This book, we're no longer using it generally. Yes, it's sir. Kept for this. If a man purge himself, so there's a purging of myself yes, that will make me sanctified. It's not sanctified that purges me, it's purging that sanctifies me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you, you know that you are willing to purge, you know what it says, purge? You vomit like constipated irritation. Everything that was within you before of the flesh. Please do you get what I'm trying to say here? Yes, sir. And then you know that your life is no longer yours but belongs to God. Mm. Yes, sir. You see, if we leave you to develop Christianity based on just you know, sanctification, you just be going, you get everything mixed up. What will come out of you will be strange fire. Will not be pure. Mm. Are you believing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will not be pure. It will, you will know that you know it. Mm. I'm sanctified. I'm the righteous of God. It's not generating that authentic result. Mm. Trust me, sir. You will say, I believe, I believe, I believe. Just say that. But you will not know why you are not growing steadily. You might have been around church for so long, but you are not, you did not layer it. Nobody told you. Maybe we forgot. I am telling you now, it's not the devil making me remind you. Yes. What I'm saying is not necessarily brand new. But I'm telling you the sequence is important to God and your growth. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So a Christian that must do well, it's not just enough to know it. You must know it sequentially. Yes, sir. Imagine them introducing a child to differentials, eh, the combination, give it one, then bring it back to come and start arithmetic. He will know everything scattered. Mm. But the sequential understanding that makes him enter with confidence as he bring out the question yes, is that he understands layer by layer, layer. line upon line, precept yes. upon precept. A little here, a little there. Somebody say glory to God. Glory yes. to God. That's what I'm trying to say. Do you understand that this is where the evangelicals got it right? 
When I say they have a 10,000, they are the ones who people that used to like say, Are you born again? Are you baptized? You know, at some point, they got bored with their pattern. But you cannot deny that their foundations were right. Mm -hmm. They understood something about Jesus. Yes, they understood something about the Christian life. Yes, that it must go right, it must go according to sequence. Yes, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's where we start. And that's where you see some people, they, they, they're grown in Christ. They keep saying, Lord, I need fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. It's good. For what? <laughs> no, I'm not making a joke. I'm serious. The reason is just to feel fresh fire. No. Fresh fire is to give you fresh confidence. Mm -hmm. You enter into that office and say, open that thing. I know what I'm saying. Fire. No jazz, no weapon, no enchantment, no fire, no judgment fire. can work against you. Yes, sir. That's what we do with fresh fire. Not just to feel powerful. Ah, you know, you know, you know. For what? For what? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why we say I'm too hot to handle. Yes, sir. Because I speak with the boss. He's, 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 he knows I'm speaking with audacity. Ah, yeah. He knows that I'm beyond reproach. He knows I'm not speaking mediocrity here. Let me just say this to you. If you are listening to me in this church and you are a junior staff in your office, you have to think like a senior staff before you become one. Otherwise, my messages may not be repeated to so much. Because I realize that if your mind is still very low, I'll be talking to you on the ground. Mm. So you have to elevate your thing. Yes, sir. And still keep on. Yes, I get what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Because you are young, but the junior staff doesn't mean that you cannot grow. So the way you listen here should be like someone, some, someone is teaching me how to become who I should be. Mm -hmm. Not that they mean they will ask me something. You understand? You can send past your present into your future. Yes, sir. And I want you to be part of that success. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Let's make it up. Woo! Glory to God. Because some of us, we need to rise beyond the oppression of your leadership in the office. You know, as I'm talking, you're still hearing the voice of your boss. Those things will affect how you can lead. So if a man therefore purge himself, are we there? Yes, sir. And says, from this, who will do it for him? He has to do it himself. He has to do it. This purging has said, I'm not going to do it. Someone says that I agree with you. He said, the level of your calling will determine the level of sanctification. Let me repeat it. The level of your calling will determine the level of your sanctification. The level of your calling will determine the level of your sanctification. The kind of things you say, I will not do. The kind of things you say, okay, I'm ready to do. The level of your calling determines the level of your sanctification. And this is very important. Are we together? Yes, yes sir. sir. That's why I want to draw your attention to the fact that God wants you to punch yourself. That's something you can do yourself. It is that level of punching that he sets you apart. Did you get know what I just said? Don't forget, he's the one that will set you apart. But it's you that will punch yourself. He will set you apart and say, come, this is what I want you to do. The purging, where, 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 where wrong things are not nice to you. Yes. You, the level of irritation that meets you when something is wrong. You know, look at David. They killed Saul, the one that wanted to kill him. Who, the Bible says when he saw the man, he said, who did you say he killed? Saul. He said, carry this guy and go and show him to a to Show this no gentleman, shake it outside there. Why? Because David's heart was too too good to be true. He couldn't contemplate how somebody can kill an anointed man. This was a man that wanted to kill you. You should be happy. I said, we've done it at last. Jesus. No. His heart, vile things were vowed to him, even when it would have benefited him. I am. I don't think you are benefiting. Yes, sir. That's why you see. That God did not quite kill David for taking Bathsheba. Because that's not the most wrong thing he can do. Uh, no. The most terrible thing a person can That's why you see, I'm speaking about the quality of your heart. You know, I was talking about hearts. This yes, sir. I was talking about heart. The broken heart. So yes, they are not broken. Anything I would have God just forgive me. As for the blood, as I cleanse me. Just, just the blood. Because I feel like I said, they fetch the bucket of blood now. Oh, really? 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 What do I mean? Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yes, David will come with a broken heart. Lord, did I do this? Oh, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know God sees your heart. So you're not going to say, I want to be like David. I will say, I know God sees your heart. Sorry, you're not going to say, I know God sees your heart. Some people do wrong things, it does not touch them. 
of us, that's where the cocoa is now. Let me just tell you tonight. Now, the other time I talk, yes, don't be deceived though. I'm telling you the truth before God who sent me a man. The purity of your spirit, the purity of your heart, yes, that you don't look at someone. That's why I said that. I tell you it's over, it's over here. Don't think that I'm still keeping it. I don't do it, sir. It's unhealthy. I will not do it. If I tell you it's over, it's over. Don't ask me again. Go and sleep. If you carry it on your own, yes, because sir. I know the danger of carrying bitterness. Some of us will mix unforgiveness with offense, with bitterness, stir it up with some envy, and put some, you know, saliva of death, or, or, or strike inside, and then put some pride around the body. Yeah, why well, just Jesus, 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 the Lord, the Lord be great. The purity of heart, during worship, what do you do? You are listening to your voice. You are listening to your voice. Or during prayer, what are you doing? <laughs> are you serious? That's why so much of you, no matter the message. Uh, no matter. Because some have already said to them that this life you can't do without corruption. No, we have to manage ourselves. The degree of your purity is the degree of your sanctification. How far are you willing to be purged? What kind of things won't you touch? But Daniel, they refuse to defile themselves with kings. Is there anything wrong with kings? No. But look, I'm not touching this one. They became times ten better. Their counterparts. It starts with purification. That's why I said first things first. Because the subject of purity helps us even receive the message of faith. Helps us receive every other message. If you just start with faith, it's not going to help you right. If the foundation of life is not faith. It's not even evangelism. I'm going to preach to the world. It is purification. The foundation of our faith for this Christian journey is not evangelism. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord, Spanish. that foundation is not changed. Hallelujah! Let's go! So this is why I thought to myself that let me use this opportunity to teach my sons and daughters the precept upon precept to purge your spirit, man. I want to close everything. Let's look at Isaiah, um, um, Psalms chapter 34. So let's say 34. Yeah, okay, let's use 34. And then we now use Psalms 15 or 24. Psalm 34 first and Psalm 24 next. That's what From verse. Um, let's start from verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My, my soul shall make a voice to the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Read on, read on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. He says, Oh, magnify the That's Lord with me. Somebody please. He says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh huh. And let us exalt the Lord together. together. Uh huh. I sought the Lord. I sought, and begin to hear. I sought the Lord. And he heard me. And he heard me. And he delivered me from all my fears. He delivered me from, not some of my fears, all my fears. Some say all my fears. All, all my fears. Where will it come from? Rent, 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 rent. Hiri, hiri, hiro, hara, hira. Hiri, hira. Then right again. Marriage, marriage, marriage. How? Way, manner, marriage, way, we, wow. I don't go there. Children, hello, 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 hello. You see, at some point you should by now have God's repertoire. <laughs> he has a track record of keeping his word. Yes, sir. And it's not a power to start saying that. He said, he delivered me from all. Oh. Yes, sir. That fear of going to do testing and find out that there's hepatitis B in you. Yes, sir. Mm. Mm. That fear that things will not go right for you. If God doesn't deliver from some, he delivers from all. Oh, okay, yeah. all, right. all my fears. And he expects you to count on the last one he delivered you from to service the next one. Oh, yeah. All my fears. Do you know how many fears can run through a man? Woo! With a lot of chest in front of him, he's afraid that his mother will die next tomorrow. Yeah. 
That's why I'm not afraid of my children or my father. God doesn't deliver me from the storm. Let's read on. Verse next. They looked unto him. They looked unto him. And, and, and were lighting. And they are not ashamed. They looked unto him, sir. They looked unto him. And the fear left their faces. It was God. Yes, sir. They looked unto him. Don't look to a man and say you look to God. Yes, sir. They looked unto him and were, were, were lighting. Yes, sir. Their faces were not ashamed. Yes, sir. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh. Where will the money come from? Where will the money come from? Where will the money come from? Can we find the money? Can we check it in? They looked up to him. I look up to you. They looked up to him. They look, all they needed to do was look. They didn't even need to beg. They just looked to him. They looked to him. They were lighting. That's the first effect of us. You become light. 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 They look to him. Who are you looking to see? Who are you looking to see? If you can, you know, you know yourself. How much of fear, what fear you have? If 
you don't have enough, enter worship. Mm. Mm. Enter worship. Listen to messages. Mm. They, will, they will form yes. something in your yes. Yes. They will shift something. Yes, sir. Because if you just jump from where you are now to prosperity, confess it, you receive it. It's not lie, but it's not lie layered up properly. Mm. I don't know if you guys don't have yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. In Jesus' name, I rebuke you. That's why sometimes you rebuke devils, they don't answer. Mm. Even headaches sometimes. Go! Oh, Lama. Oh, it is worse. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 And when you pray, something happened that time. Then after that, something came back. <laughs> God is one that will remove your head. Do you know what, what? Do you know how much treasure it is for God to have someone that fears in your mouth? Do you know what He did to Job? That's Job's credential. A man that feared the Lord. That's career. He was not born again. But he feared the Lord. He feared the Lord. The Bible says he was the richest in all the East. Satan came on. He said, "Have you considered Job?" Job after party. He was not there. He would call it show or let's come back. The Lord needs to be watched. I don't know say I don't even know say that. Don't worry. Don't don't worry. Just worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just watch. He's trying every time. Each time he killed a ram for God, God replaced the ram. There was no job is before Abraham. If the Bible were to be written in order of how they were written, written, Job is the first book of the Bible. Are you aware? Ah, I am. Job is older than Abraham. His creator is one of the grandsons of the Melchizedek, um, of them, um, Methuselah. Them. Mm. Uh-huh. So Job is not your mentor. Just say, uh, no, 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 Job is <laughs> that old, but let me happen. Are you not seeing some yes, discussion sir. in that Job? It's because it's a poet book. That's why they put it in Psalms, Job's Proverbs, and all those things. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's why they prove it. Job is the first book of the Bible. <laughs> first credential, you fear the Lord. That's Jesus. what he has. Did you see his wife? No fear of God. But God covered her. But what and I showed up later on. Cause God and die. You more. I'm speaking about this because in our journey this year, we're going to hear a lot about purification and yes. about prosperity. And I am of the opinion that to stay purified without being prosperous is to be incomplete. Mm. But it does not start without prosperity. I, I, I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. To be true and sincere. Not to try to love you. Yes, sir. That if they will take anything from you, let them know you to find your heart for God. Mm. Mm. My heart for God. You, you don't know me until you. Hi-ya. You don't know me! You have no idea who's talking to you, sir. Yes, you, you, you will rather kill me before you touch that heart. Yes, <laughs> I'm a lost man for it. Yes, sir. I'm gone! Yes, sir. They, I am I am like. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why he speaks closer to those people. Mm. The secrets of the Lord are with those that fear. Right. Yes. This life is about secrets, sir. Yes, sir. The secrets God will tell those that fear. Mm. Dangote's shares are coming out. Go to the office and buy 10,000 shares. He will tell you secrets. Secrets. Before everybody hears. Secrets. What people don't know, we give to you. Hey, I want you to please make up your mind. This oh, Shabbatah, Allah, Bakabah. I just started. I'll be sharing these things gradually. I've done this. This was what I was supposed to preach last week. Thank you. So I just started. There are about six S's inside. <laughs> the first one. Santa, Santa. 